Welcome to the Shearwalls online tutorial for the US edition. In this video, we will go through the content of the Shear Results section. For this tutorial, we will be using the same structure from the two previous videos but with different manual loads added. The project file available in the description is saved until this point. We will now run the design and go through the results. Let's take a look at the shear results for wind design calculated with a flexible diaphragm. The most important information on this table is in the far right column, the ratio of the shear force that has been distributed to each shear wall, in this case distributed based on wind forces and a flexible diaphragm assumption and the design capacity. I'll talk about that more shortly. Notice the results are separated into two main groups the north-south shear lines and the east-west shear lines. The shear lines within a direction are further grouped in order, shear lines 1 to 3 in the north-south direction, and ABC in the east-west direction, and story level. If there are multiple shear walls within a shear line, they will be presented as segment 1, 2, 3, and so on. Beside the name of the wall or shear line is the wall group as listed in the sheathing and framing material tables. We talked about these tables before in video 5.1 entitled Project Information and Structural Data. Coordinating the wall groups shown here with the different walls on the shear lines is important. It allows to determine which wall group works for this particular load condition. Here you will find information for the force direction and the allowable stress design, or ASD forces, which includes the unit shear force on segment and the total shear force. Vmax, or VFT, represents forces specific to perforated or force transfer walls. If the generated force is the same in both directions, both will be written and if not, results for the wall for each direction will be indicated separately. The force direction is indicated because sometimes the magnitude of the load varies based on direction. This is common when walls with multi-segments are subjected to dead loads. In the next column, you will find details on the aspect ratio adjustment factor from SpeedWiz 4.3.4.2 and the on-block structural wood panel factor CUB from SpeedWiz 4.3.3.2 as well as information on the allowable shear capacities, including the shear capacity for interior and exterior sheathing, the adjustment factor for perforated walls, the sheathing combination rule, the combined interior and exterior unit shear capacity, and the total shear capacity of shear line. Notice there is a legend at the bottom of the table. This will help you remember the meaning of each terms we have just mentioned in this table. Most importantly, the shear results section contains the ratio of the total factored shear force on wall divided by the total shear resistance for all segments on wall. If that ratio exceeds 1.0, the design wall is under capacity and the wall would fail the analysis. A warning message would also appear just under the table indicating the capacity was exceeded. Remember also that a warning would appear in the design summary too.